Today's episode is brought to you by Shaka Guide. Shaka Guide is a tour guide right on your smartphone. Shaka Guide uses GPS to guide you to interesting places along the way. Automatic audio tours with turn by turn directions means all you need to do is turn on the tour and drive. Shaka Guide's self guided tours give you the freedom to explore the beautiful Hawaiian islands and know where to stop and what to do. So go to Hawaii's Best Travel.com slash shaka and download that today welcome to hawaii's best travel podcast where we help you prepare for your next trip to hawaii discover the experiences businesses and stories that make hawaii the aloha state and now your host brian murphy aloha and welcome to episode 47 of hawaii's best so glad that you are tuning in today Today, I am joined with Michael Clem, who is the owner of Land and Sea Golf with locations in Carmel-by-the-Sea, California, and in Honolulu that recently just opened up back in November of 2020. On today's episode, we talk all about that opening up of that new location. We also talk about the current golf climate and culture, how right now is an incredible time to pick up the game of golf and especially if you're traveling to Hawaii some of the best courses in the world are located on the islands and getting out there on the courses you not only got to look good doing it you got to feel good too and that's where land and sea golf come into play with their incredible attire and golf gear. This is going to be a fun one. You want to make sure you go to landandseagolf.com where you can check out everything that Michael and his team have going on over there. So let's go ahead and we're going to head on over and we're going to talk story with Michael from Land and Sea Golf. Michael, thank you so much for coming on Hawaii's Best today. How was the holidays for you? Uh, it was really good. Got to spend a lot of time in California and heading back to Hawaii now. This is the first time in a couple of years where I haven't been out in Hawaii for Christmas. So a little different for me. Excited to head back. So Land and Sea Golf, this is something that actually started in California, correct? Yeah. You know, I would say it was kind of developed more or less in Hawaii. Okay. I moved out there in 2008. I went and played college golf for BYU Hawaii, which has a campus up on the North Shore of Oahu. I lived up at Turtle Bay at the condos there, which is super close to golf course and the North Shore and surf and everything. And I went to college out there, finished up. I ended up staying out there and working as a sales rep for a golf surf company called Link Soul. They're based in Oceanside, California, and kind of deep roots in the surf culture and then a lot in golf also. And so I worked out there for about two or three years. And, you know, as I was selling, you know, this golf clothing company to, you know, all the different like resorts and mostly like resort shops and beach shops. And uh, I sold a lot to like Turtle Bay. And like, it was kind of cool to see how this brand, which is a little more lifestyle in the golf space was able to kind of translate into like, you know, a little more of the surf culture. We did a lot of like hybrid shorts and products like that. So I always had this thought of like incorporating this brand with a lot of other like like-minded brands into kind of a retail concept. You know, I was always super impressed by some of the really cool like surf boutique retail out there. Like Milo down in town is super cool. Aloha Exchange on Kauai. Like they have these really, really more destination retail. Like you go to the shop because they have really cool stuff and their vibe and their Instagram is really cool. And I was like, you know, there really is nothing like that for the golf. You know, all these golf shops are pretty cookie cutter, kind of basic, more like club driven, not less about like the style. And like the nice thing about Hawaii is you can wear a t-shirt in most places when you play and wear shorts. And it's not so much about like tuck your shirt in, polo, wear. You can kind of wear it, wear it untucked and wear, you know, Aloha shirt if you want to play. So I kind of, you know, thought there was a space for that more lifestyle retail and the golf, the little golf focus. And so I've, you know, as I was out there, I thought about it. And then my wife, who's from Oahu, Sharice, she's from Kaneohe. We got married three years ago. And so I was kind of in a transition of taking over the California territory for Linksol. I was going to still keep Hawaii, but I needed to move to California. So with that, I can kind of pick where I want to live. The company was based in Southern California, but since I do sales, 
I can pick kind of wherever I want to live. So we picked Pebble Beach just because, well, there's some epic golf in this area. And I figured if <laughs> yeah. I was going to, you know, commute around the state and commute to Hawaii, like where would I want to be in the weekends if I had to live in California? So we chose this area. About a year after being here, we kind of decided to roll out that land and sea concept and open a store in May of last year in Carmel by the sea, which is pretty close to where we live. And we rolled that out. Pretty cool launch. We did it right before the U.S. Open, which was at Pebble Beach that year. A couple of cool parties and kind of rolled it from there. And, you know, some of the concept and like we always kind of wanted to have a little Hawaii influence, you know, went pretty well. And then about six or eight months after that, we were like, okay, let's, you know, we always want to do one in Hawaii. So we kind of started to develop that one. And now we open that Honolulu location. It was supposed to open early, early 2020. And then, you know, COVID happened. And now that, that location recently opened, correct? Yeah, it was slated to open March of 2020. Like perfect timing, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we were going to open the end of the month. If we got everything done, definitely like early April was the time frame. You know, we were kind of, I was there really like early March, just like finishing up a couple things with the painter getting ready to ship, you know, ship some fixtures in, picking up a couple of things that I was getting made on the island. And then they're all scheduled to drop back. I, I was going to fly back for a week just to California to get some work stuff done and then come right back out. And then, you know, the whole world was at March 16, 17, 18, everything just started to shut down. And then so luckily, you know, our, my landlord was very nice and epic and super easy to work with. And we were able to push back that opening. You know, it was a little bit of scary times. You know, our, our yeah. shop here shut down for almost 90 days in Carmel. And the Hawaii one, we really didn't know when it was going to open. You know, through that whole time, we're like, oh, let's open in June. Let's open in July. You know, right. I mean, I, I listened to some of the other podcasts you had about like, you know, the whole testing program being rolled out that, you know, was always delayed every month. You're like, yeah, okay, exactly. <laughs> when am I going to go out there and finish when I open this thing? Should I open this thing? Always on my mind for the whole time. But we were able to, with the, with the great support of our the landlord we have at, and down there at the Hokua Tower, we were able to open up, you know, right in November, early November. Mm-hmm. You know, different kind of opening than our Carmel location. No big party, no big, you know, anything like that. Trying to follow the COVID procedures. You know, how to tell family, hey, you guys got to wait outside. You know, <laughs> it's all the, you know, it's amazing the local support got from my wife's family, from all my friends and family who live on the island to come out and visit and, you know, like, oh, hey guys, I feel like can have like, you know, five people in the shop at a time, you know, all the, you know, these rules. And it's like hard to tell your family if like 20 people show up all, you know, like, hey guys, space it out. Don't come, you got to wait outside. But yeah, you know, we opened up in November. It was, it was uh, pretty exciting for us to do that. And my, we really think it was special for my wife and all of her family. Cause it was a, a pretty much a family affair having like my, yeah. you know, my, my uh, father-in-law help out. He's pretty handy, helped do a lot of the work and, you know, save a little dough there because it was a little interesting trying to navigate all that, especially being delayed so long. So how does that, I mean, just thinking as far as balance life and still doing obviously sales with LinkSoul, which is a a huge, awesome company, and now opening another spot and still running the one in Carmel. How have you kind of found a rhythm? You know, I think the biggest thing is just communicating. You know, luckily, my wife's cousin are the two of our employees that run the shop in Hawaii. My brother's super cool, easy. You know, luckily, he's my brother. So my younger brother, he's easy to work with. He kind of listens to me. And, you know, we've been able to work together and, you know, open and, you know, run programs and incentives and, you know, different things with him and make it work. So, you know, luckily with the, you know, the, the Hawaii testing program, it's pretty easy to fly back and forth now with the tests that you can get pretty quickly. So I'm able to go back and forth a couple times since then. So it's, it's working. And the, the rhythm, you know, I wouldn't say we're, run, you know, it's a, still trying to find the rhythm. It's only been two months, but we're going to have to be a lot of support from, you know, some friends and family on the island. So it's been great. Now, how would you compare kind of going more into depth in the golf culture because a lot of people who are listening to this right now are dreaming of that next vacation to Hawaii and a lot of those people do come with their clubs yeah and want to get on the course but I'm just curious because you talked a little bit about Link Soul and their vibe as far as a brand and with Land to Sea I'm just curious just as far as the golf culture is concerned 
comparing to where you're at in Carmel and Oahu? How would you compare those two cultures? A lot of like my friends here that golf, a lot of them do surf. You know, it's a little colder. You got to throw on a wetsuit. And I think that's one of the things that kind of drew me to like, if we're not going to live in Hawaii, where else are we going to live? And this area, the quality of golf, the quality of the surf is like, was like, okay, this is a good spot to live. And so, you know, they call this area one of the greatest meetings of land and sea, that whole Pebble Beach, Monterey Peninsula area. And so that's kind of where we can see the whole land and sea golf part is like, it's a, it's that lifestyle of like living by the ocean where, you know, you do surf, you do golf. And I think that is no more evident than like, you know, Oahu and Hawaii, where there's some of the, you know, best golf in the world. And same thing in the Monterey Peninsula area, of like quality golf is like second to none between those two areas. It's pretty good. So, you know, I consider we can, you know, that whole lifestyle and vibe of the land and sea and kind of working in Link Soul is just a very kind of casual take on golf attire. You know, I think it, and that resonated with me, like living in Hawaii where, you know, you don't want to wear that big, you know, bright pink, you know, Nike shirt. And, or else if you wore that going out to dinner in the North shore, people would, I, I would, <laughs> I, I would just feel out of place. And, you know, right. I wouldn't say you would get people would be like, what are you doing here? But like, you know, that's just not the attire that I would like try to wear. And especially, I think that resonates on the golf course. It's a little more casual. It's clothes that you can wear out to dinner, wear to work you know, go to the bar after, you know, a round of golf and grab some food and not feel totally out of place. Like I feel like some golf attire, like the white pants and the white belt is not really kind of what Link Soul or what Land Sea is about. It's more, you know, that take of like a surf aesthetic of just very casual, natural colors and natural fabrications is kind of what we look for in the Land and Sea vibe is the same thing with Link Soul. So, you know, they paired well together and then a lot of same thing with some of the accessories and other brands that we have in there. Now, some of the most incredible courses, obviously, are where you're at right now, Pebble Beach area, but also, too, on Oahu and also the surrounding neighbor islands. What are some of the, like, must-do? You're coming to Hawaii. You got to make sure you hit up this course or that course. Yeah, totally. I think if you go to Oahu, you know, public kahuku on the North Shore for what you pay, it's awesome. It's a nine hole little gem on the North shore of Oahu, like 10 minutes from Turtle Bay. I think it's a great, like go play there in the morning, maybe go to Turtle Bay in the afternoon if you want to get like a full day of golf, but nine holes, epic, you know, views are all along the ocean and for it's super reasonable. I don't remember what the like non-local rate is, but I think it's like 18 bucks or 20 bucks and you can go play this dope golf course nice. on the ocean. Anywhere else you're paying hundreds, two hundreds. You know, I live, Next to Pebble Beach, where they charge, you know, five hundred and fifty dollars, and you're, but you get golf on the ocean for like twenty bucks. I mean, you really can't beat that on the North Shore of Oahu. Granted, the conditions aren't like primo, but I mean, hey, it's all about the views, more or less than anything. So, <laughs> for sure, and who you're, and who you're hanging out with. So I think you know, Kahuku's a must go see. Turtle Bay, I love the, all the guys up there are amazing, and it's a fun spot to hang. And there's a little restaurant Lele's there, which is a little putting green out front. You can hang out. And, you know, as far as COVID, COVID environment, super mellow. It's a great spot to hang up there. Now, talking a little bit more about the resorts and obviously you think of a resort, you naturally think about the golf course attached to it or surrounding yeah. it. I'm thinking about like the Koalina area, right? West side. How have those types of courses fared this past year? Yeah, you know, what's cool about what I do is I, I sell also Link Soul to all those guys that work in the resort business. And it's been interesting to see how they've been able to handle and manage. And I talk to them a lot just because, you know, we're involved in what products to buy, whether it's like Wailea, which is a great area. And they have, you know, they sell some of the pro- products that I work with and, and then Link Soul too. And then in Colina, like, yeah, their business has definitely been affected. I think golf as a whole, in general, in the mainland, you know, the United States has been really boosted by COVID. It's one of the only safe activities you can do, you know, outside of, you know, maybe sur- like surfing and golf are booming now because it's one of the few things you can do that's very COVID friendly and COVID safe. Those golf courses have been drastically impacted, you know, especially if the resort's not open or just like Turtle Bay is an example. The resort's shut down right now, but the golf course is open. So their business is way down. You know, I think as we've been able to open up the last two months, you've seen some of that business come back. But I think it's, 
you know, a while, it's a couple months away from getting back to healthy levels for, for the islands. But vice versa, the, the local municipal golf courses are very packed. Clubs in the area are, it's hard to get a tee time. So people are playing golf. I think just those resort courses on the islands are a little bit more open. And you also can get some great deals now if you're willing to venture out to the islands too. So just for clarity, those courses, even though like a, a resort like Turtle Bay may be temporarily closed right now, the courses are available to be played. Yep, absolutely. They're cool. open to, you know, to local and to visitors too. Great. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, being in California, the golf courses were one of the first things to like reopen. One of my buddies, he's an avid golfer. And that was one of the things that he was like, just so pumped to get back out there. And I know that there are a lot of people who hadn't played in a while who kind of got back out on the on the courses as well. So that's cool. Yeah, totally. I, you know, I, it's kind of therapeutic. You think, hey, this is, a, this is a very stressful year for everybody, no matter how you fared out, you know, economically and socially. It was a hard it was a hard time, but I think being able to go out and golf and if you can socially, you know, hang out with some of your friends and do it in a safe way. And it's a great thing to do for a couple hours. And, you know, I'm glad to see that the industry's kind of had a resurgence this last year. I think that'll definitely help, you know, the courses in Hawaii, you know, just in general, the whole golf industry to kind of grow and expand, which it needed a little bit of a boost in the last couple of years. I think this, you know, there's a big rise. I was reading a couple articles where, you know, there's more rounds played this year than in like 1997 when golf was at its height and Tiger Woods was like kind of a resurgence of the game. And this year was like the same amount or more rounds played. So it's cool to see that golf is making a comeback. I think it'll continue to kind of stay strong as people realize it's a great social activity. You know, when you can't go to your friends, you guys can probably go out and play around and hang out and, you know, you don't have the stress about, you know, COVID, whereas you can't really go have like, a, you know, a family barbecue or something like that or hang out and watch a, you know, a game just because it's a little more socially and a little safer to do that than go play golf. So, yeah. So in comparing to like 2018, 2019, the rounds played were a lot less. Had it been on a, a decline, would you say? Yeah, it definitely. I would say it definitely been on a decline. You know, a lot of golf courses were closing just as a little, you know, little, there wasn't the demand there was, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. But now, I mean, it's hard to get a tea time at most places, mm. especially I know in the area where I live, where, you know, you're in Monterey, Carmel, you're, you know, an hour and a half to drive from San Francisco, an hour from San Jose. Those courses in the area, people want to get out of their house and go. And I know the same thing in, uh, in Hawaii, like Alawai, which is right in town is super packed. Like you need to, you can book a tea time a week out and you have to call that morning like right when they open or else you're not going to get a tea time for the following week. Like you can't just call and be like, Hey, can I get out tomorrow or today or something? There's just no tea time availability. So it's cool to see that. That is cool. Yeah. What caused kind of that decline or lack of interest the previous years? I think it was a lack of time. You know, I think a lot of guys were commuting to work, spending two hours in the car uh, you know, they had to be at the office at eight o'clock. They had to be there till five. You know, they got a family, kids. They might've played a little bit when they were growing up, but now, you know, those things pull away from the ability to go spend, take a couple hours and go play golf. Whereas now you know, you're stuck working at home. You've been having the kids all day. You know, you, you need a little bit of a break and get out of the house and, you know, you're not driving two hours or, you know, you're, say you live on the West side in Oahu and you're not driving an hour and a half to town for work anymore, can work from home. I think that part of the, our community that can work from home and still have a job has a lot more time on their hands. And I think golf's a great outlet for that. And I think that's kind of helped surge interest into, into the sport. That's great. Now for land and sea, how has interest been this past year with the resurgence of rounds played speaking mainly into your Carmel location, but then also love to shift over to how things are going on Oahu. Yeah. You know, the Carmel location, we were to open back up in June and it was a little, you know, I think people were a little um, uneasy about going back and being around people and shopping like in the first month or two. And I think that was definitely shown in sales and, you know, versus June of last year was our best year, of the best month of the year. And it was besides May being shut down and it wasn't one of our greatest months. 
So and then, it, you know, it clo- slowly kept, you know, building. And I think as more people got into the game, you know, they needed clothes and accessories and gloves, different things like that and shoes. You know, we saw our sales, you know, every month since opening back up, slowly increase and increase and increase in the Carmel location. So it's been a nice kind of to see, you know, year over year, I mean, not being open a full year because we were shut down for about three months with that COVID shutdown. But just to see sales kind of increase and see the interest in golf and new customers and new people like, hey, you know, like bringing their wives in or their girlfriend in to like, hey, my wife is learning how to play golf and we're both getting back into it. You know, we need to get gloves and shoes and all these things. You're like, oh, that's awesome. You know, like kind of being stoked for them getting back into the game. And so I think you've seen a lot of newcomers come to the game, which uh, has been cool to see over the last couple of months. And I think as we've opened Hawaii in November, you know, that interest is definitely like, you know, November first month being open, you know, holiday season, pretty good month. Then December slowly increase and you know, we hope that in January here, we'll just continue to see a little increase as more people come back to the islands and more people that live there part of the year are going to come back in this January, February months. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, surf lessons are a thing. You can go, you know, get surf lessons on Waikiki and yeah. pretty much anywhere. If someone is coming and maybe they've never even picked up a club before, but they see like this beautiful scenery, they want to get out on the course how would you help that person or what are some tools that someone can, you know, be directed towards on vacation or just picking up golf in general? Yeah, I think picking up golf, you know, what's super cool is about a lot of the resorts have these beginning packages that you can go out and play like three or four holes. I know my friend on Kauai, you help runs the Princeville area and they do this little like wine and dine thing where you can go play three holes get some wine and then watch the sunset. And it's a great way to like kind of introduce your, you know, your spouse or your friend, you know, your yeah. lo- loved one to the game and also like get her on the golf course and get yourself out there too. But yeah, I think, you know, a lot of these resorts and offer like lesson packages where you can come out if you're staying there for a week, you get two or three lessons and go play in afternoon nine. I think if you're learning the game, the best time is to kind of go and try to play don't play the full round. You can go play, you know, nine holes in the afternoon and take your time and enjoy it. And enjoy more or less just being outside. You know, I think that's what the game is about. It's not so much about you know, hitting the ball far or trying to, you know, be good at it. It's more about enjoying being outside. But yeah, I think, you know, if you're new to the island, look up wherever you're staying, if there's golf packages or lesson packages. And I think what's really cool is the golf space, you know, being able to open right back up has kind of figured out ways to do things and teach lessons and get out there. And probably one of the very first things that you'll notice once you step out on your first hole is you got to have like the right attire too, right? Yeah. So that's kind of where land and sea comes into play. Just golf attire in general and the, the products that you guys offer. How would you help just kind of describe why would someone want to look into like a land and sea and as far as golf attire in general? cool thing about like the gear that we sell at land and see the brands that are a part of that, that product mix the shops is that like it's super easy to wear you know our shorts or our, our shirts like or we make a hybrid short from link soul that you can take go jump in the water and play golf go on a hike go do a quick workout outside and you don't really have to change because the fabric is like a super quick drying amphibious fabric that you can take in the water and play golf in and go hike it's stretchy enough that you can kind of wear wherever and same thing with our shirts our shirts are kind of like or you know a lot of them are organic pot and recycled poly kind of sustainable fabrics that don't look like big bright you know things that you're wearing but we also have some really cool patterns you know this really kind of fun it's like a knit fabric so it like feels like a polo but it's an aloha shirt so you can like it stretches enough to you know, play golf in it. That's cool. Yeah. But it kind of has that like nice, you know, go play nine holes in the afternoon and then go out to dinner and it's, you know, it performs and stretchy enough to wear versus some of like the standard old school Aloha shirts are just a little too stiff and don't have enough give in the shoulders to, you know, kind of be, you know, move around in them as much as, as the kind of some of the products that we offer. So, you know, we have some great shoes from this shoe company that's true links where they're like a knit golf shoe. So it's like a knit top, so you can wear it, you know, no socks, cruise around, kick them off if you want to go on the beach or go on a quick hike, you know, get them wet, they dry out super fast. So, you know, I think we got a couple of really cool products that make your vacation a little easier to do if you want to go hike, go golf, go to the beach, 
I think having gone back and forth to Hawaii, I think, you know, the, it's a safe place to go to if you do it right and do your testing. And I think, you know, it's going to, it's a great place to go play golf. There's some amazing options on Oahu, you know, Maui, Big Island, Kauai has some new programs where you can get back over there and enjoy being outside and enjoy golf. And if you stop by Oahu or you can stop by our shop, we're kind of right near down, you know, near that South shore market area, Ala Moana zone. So kind of gear up for a great trip. If you're only there for a week, we got some nice gear to kind of do a couple of different activities. And so people can find you online and on social. Yeah, totally. If you know, we, we have a full website, everything that's available. I think with COVID it was cool as we had a lot of time to work on our online presence, everything that's available in our shops in Hawaii on Oahu is available online. So at landonseagolf.com, you can go check that out. We have some, you know, in our, we have collection pages, just gear in Hawaii, gear from Carmel. So yeah, you can totally find everything and you would be able to get in our shops in Hawaii online too. Yeah. And we'll definitely, guys, we'll link all that into the show notes. Obviously, I'm curious, Michael, because you, you've been going back and forth a couple of times, like you mentioned, from yeah. California to Hawaii. And that's a lot of people from California that tend to travel to Hawaii. I'm curious, just from your perspective, what has that been like for you? I know you mentioned, you know, testing and it's it's been pretty seamless. We still get a lot of questions and a lot of, you know, clarity, but would love to hear firsthand from you, how has traveling to Hawaii and then traveling back to Hawaii been and what tips would you give to someone? Totally. Okay. So, you know, before COVID, I would go back and forth to Hawaii probably once a month or once every six weeks for about a week to work. And I was more like a business traveler. And so I was there quite a bit. So I'm used to it traveling. I think as COVID hit, you know, you have to do your tests before you go. And I found it super easy to use that vault health one where you ship it to your house, do it, you spit in the thing and you ship it back. I mean, I have not had any issues with it. Trying to go outer island, I had a little issue with Walgreens getting my test back in time, but that was when I was on Oahu trying to go to the big island. But, you know, it's been pretty easy. I think, you know, planning ahead, getting your test. What's really awesome right now is Hawaiian Airlines is super flexible, allowing you to change your dates and move back and forth. So you know, plan a window of like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go Tuesday to Thursday. I don't get my test back in time. You know, they're very, they're very uh, cool about letting you move the ticket back a day or move it up a day and just be flexible. And I think, you know, your hotels and stuff are probably the same way too. You know, just plan ahead and get your test and have a good mask. It's comfortable to wear because you'll have to wear it on the plane for a couple hours. But, you know, going back and forth six or seven times now since COVID, it's really pretty easy. So, I mean, just got to wear your mask. And that's pretty much about it. The only difference, the airlines I've flown every time with Hawaiian and they've been super clean and nice and spaced out and not super full, which has been, which has been cool too. Yeah, that's great. And Hawaiian Air isn't a sponsor of this podcast yet. And they'd be great if they were. We fly Hawaiian. That's, that's just what we do. They're always great from our experience. So you mentioned the at home test, the saliva based test which is super convenient. And you can do that through Hawaiian site as well, correct? Yeah, they have a link and it brings you right to the Vault Health thing. And then, you know, once you create your profile, it's pretty easy to reorder tests and do it there. I think the hard thing is, you know, the first go around, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're going back, you're going twice a year, it only gets easier going back and forth. So. And how quick did you get your results? You know, I, I did in the morning. I mailed it in that day and I got it the following afternoon. That's so, great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's super cool. They overnight it to you. You get it the next day and then you just ship it in the next day. So that's pretty quick. You know, if I was planning on traveling, I would probably plan on flying out like Wednesday to Friday, mm-hmm. you know, just so, you know, take your test Monday, Tuesday, you get it back Wednesday, Thursday, you have some time there to make sure you get your results back in case you are in delays. Yeah. Now flying back, do you have to test again or? No, so you don't have to test again. The only thing is if you are trying to go inner island, you can fly to like Big Island, you know, with one test, like you fly, you know, fly to Honolulu, take your plane over to, from, you know, Honolulu to Kona. And that one test you took before kind of things. But if you go to Honolulu for five days and then you want to go to Big Island, you got to take a test before you leave Honolulu. So that is the only like, but what I realized I'm probably going to go to Big Island first. But then when you go from Big Island to Honolulu, you do not have to test again. 
that's what I did. I'm pretty sure unless it's changed the last couple of weeks. Gotcha. Well, great. Michael, thank you so much for coming on Hawaii's Best today. Appreciate you, man. And we'll definitely link out all this good stuff and best of luck to Lanasi going into 2021. Yeah, absolutely. Hope everybody gets out there, gets outside and play some golf this year. <laughs> for sure. Appreciate you and your time. Absolutely. Thank you for your time, man. That was awesome. I just want to say thank you again to Michael for coming on today and just sharing some of his insights, some of his perspective from this previous year, but also his heart behind Land and Sea Golf. So again, go to landandseagolf.com to find out more about what they got going on. And I think the biggest key takeaway for me and just hearing Michael's story is to try something new. If if golf happens to be one of those things that you've always wanted to try and do, doing that in Hawaii with no judgment, you just got to get out there and do it. A lot of the resorts do have packages where you can, you know, go ahead and do a few rounds and and do the the dinner thing. Wherever you're staying, I would just kind of look into that. But even if you are at home or wherever you're at, maybe look into your local golf course and and see what they have, you know, going on there. Golf is such a cool thing to get into. It's been a while since I've played around, probably back in high school. It's been that long, maybe college. I just love just, you know, getting out there and the actual game of golf is is so much fun and relaxing. And it's just about being outside, relaxing and all those things that Michael already talked about. So that was my biggest key takeaway, even if it's, you know, surfing or, or whatever. Try something new and maybe golf is that for your next trip to Hawaii. In the next couple of weeks, I do have some exciting news that I can't wait to share with you guys and how it affects this podcast and how it affects Hawaii's best. So stay tuned for that. You want to make sure you hit subscribe so you get notified on the next episode. And I just want to say thank you again for your time and being awesome. Until next time, be well. Aloha. Thanks for listening to Hawaii's Best Travel Podcast. To stay up to date on future episodes, be sure to subscribe. For more information to help you plan your next trip to Hawaii, visit hawaiisbesttravel.com.